My name is Paul Cornish, uh, if you couldn't tell, because I have a mask on. Um, and I feel very fortunate to be a part of this year's Angel City Jazz Festival. Uh, I've been living in LA six years, and I've always admired the uh, performances that this festival has brought. Uh, some of my favorite musicians that uh, you wouldn't otherwise get to see in LA year round, uh, Angel City is constantly bringing some of the most innovative people. So I feel very fortunate to um, contribute to this year's festival. And uh, I am also very fortunate that this is um, partly uh, happening because of the uh, LA Jazz Society's commission, uh, which you will hear in four parts entitled uh, Every Storm Runs Out of Rain. And I just wrote it about my experience being in the current pandemic. And it was like a, a quote I heard from Maya Angelou. And uh, it just helped me to remember that uh, everything is temporary, even though we're in this moment right now, it won't always be like this. So uh, while we're in this moment, how can I make the most of uh, the possible advantage that I could have that you wouldn't otherwise have, you know, as you're, you know, running your busy life, you know, maybe this downtime can give you some uh, insight or help you start something new. And I've sort of tried to look at it that way. And that's kind of uh, what the second movement is about, which you'll hear entitled, Remember When You Ask For Rain. And that's just about um, kind of asking for the opposite thing. You know, I mean, maybe quite literally when it's like very hot, you might ask for rain. And then maybe when you're in rain, you might ask for it to stop raining. So um, every kind of moment and season has its advantage and, and disadvantage. And I try to um, take everything for what it is and uh, I'm very fortunate to have Christian Newman on drums, uh, Logan Kane on bass, Aiden Lombard on trumpet, Devin Daniels on sax, John Hatamiya, and uh, we will play music for you now.
All right. Um, so you've reached the midpoint. Uh, I'm a little tired, but it's okay. And uh, you heard from Devin Daniels on alto saxophone, John Hatamiya on trombone, uh, soloing on the first one, and then Aiden Lombard also, uh, they were trading. And uh, now uh, we have part three of my piece, uh, which I entitled Black Plague. And uh, it was, I was inspired to write it uh, in light of the recent events of um, George Floyd uh, and, uh, and uh, many others who have died at the hands of uh, police brutality. And uh, especially it happening now during the pandemic was kind of just like, uh, a wake up call to me personally that even though the world uh, may stop in some sense, um, you know, injustice doesn't stop and people are, are still suffering, um, even though we're inside uh, most of the time and, you know, we're wearing masks and there's very little interaction that that doesn't stop um, hatred. And uh, I think we, um, a lot of us have seen how the system uh, is really, uh, you know, it's true colors, you know, when, when there's not too many things going on, you know, you kind of see something for what it really is. And so uh, this is uh, speaking on that. And you uh, also, likewise, um, I named it Black Plague because the pandemic itself has also been disproportionately affecting uh, communities of color and lower income communities, um, you know, with no no real access to testing and the healthcare. Um, you know, if you look at the data, it's, it's been disproportionately affecting those communities. So it's kind of twofold. And uh, speaking more on that, you will hear from a poet named uh, Brandon Alexander Williams, who is, um, I think, one of the great poets of our time right now. And uh, yeah, so that's part three. And then we'll end it with uh, what I call after the rain kind of just playing on the same analogy for this whole piece. And uh, it's kind of just looking at what's gonna come after this, you know, everything we've seen with um, how the sickness has affected our everyday interactions to, you know, how it's even affecting music, uh, especially for us. And also with the injustices that we've seen, what's the world gonna look like after this pandemic, after we've experienced all we've gone through. And uh, that's something only time will tell, but, Thank you for uh, listening to us and tuning in to this festival. Uh, please continue to, to support uh, the arts and uh, foundations uh, like Angel City Jazz Festival and the LA Jazz Society. I want to thank them for this commission. And uh, once again, we have Christian Newman on drums, Logan Kane on bass, John Hatsumiya on trombone, Devin Daniels on sax, Aiden Lombard on trumpet, and I'm Paul Cornish. Thank you.
Cold-blooded murder in the Midwest, so it seems. Black Minnesota, feared in Minnesota. The fruit of Philando's death in Falcon Heights left many Apple-less in Minneapolis lost their mind. And every hood is a Kona store. High fructose, no juice, bro. Just drink, all by design. Only food desserts and food deserts. When you know good, you usually do better. The power of suggestion goes a long way. The most commonly traveled path can align with the wrong play. The songs say, everybody's doing it. It's not that bad, you heard me. White and the blue take black life all the time. What is this, a Duke jersey? Blue devils deserve to get an image tainted, please. Killing fathers of many babies and giving administrative leave. It take longer to become a lawyer than an officer of the law. Yeah, a public servant, your honor who? He got trauma too. All the more reason that he and those akin shouldn't be called to do. Duty, have this position. Morals outweigh brawn and bravery. If you supposed to protect and serve, I wanna stand up conscious patrolling and saving me. These loose cannons with loose cannons breaking legacies out of fear and cause they feelings hurt, then hide behind a wall of silence before mama's cries echo the ceiling first. He can't talk to me like that. I, I'm a police officer, so I'ma let my ego compete and my partner won't be auditor. Cold-blooded murder in the Midwest, so it seems. Black Minnesota, feared in Minnesota. The fruit of Philando's death in Falcon Heights left many Apple-less in Minneapolis lost their mind. I lose mine too, and burn down a police station. They convinced us we needed to be police to receive safety. Talking about be patient. And when we test pros with protests, they ignited this pandemic and made our elders be patients. Pre-existing conditions. How convenient. Like the Kona store. Look in my eyes. Sweet auntie probably wouldn't have the sugar if she didn't grow up around products with nothing but sugar to buy. She short-tempered, high blood pressure, was an empty nester. Now the Rona got her daughter laid off and grandbaby living with her interjecting, interrupting. Business as usual, introverts doomed to do. Frequent social norms, parents gotta be homeschooling you or a Chromebook nanny to short attention spans. New apps clocking, collecting data and facial recognition scans while you gif and dance. Feast and eat, I mean eight seconds off your life. Mm -mm. That's how long you gotta ride the bull to be scored before it shake you off and almost take your life. Internet, worldwide spider web weaving a place to lie, to stay in line and stay on live and data mine, but my data mine. New law, they want you to be six feet apart when you being out. Stay masked up so you can inhale that carbon dioxide that you supposed to be breathing out. Sanitizing suggested, but they won't mandate wearing scrubs and gloves to the method. Now buddy fixing my sandwich, talk my sir. I won't serve you without a mask while you stand, but I'ma prep your sub with my hands. And if you don't pay, I'ma call the laws and you'll give them easy respect. And when you do, they'll still put their knees on your neck in front of the corner store. Only God knows what the corner know. It ain't safe, dude. You ain't safe too. Black boys came through, slain in the same noose. New strange fruit, Gatorade flavor made juice. If you drink it, you will probably hate the taste too.